I thought we were in for disaster a couple of years ago, and and then it just I think everyone did with as far as more of a heavy recession, and it's been tough, but what has been so far is is now becoming you know, I think a little healthy. It's been great to be in Utah. Yeah, yeah. but right. because we're in Utah, I feel like our headwind is. I, I feel like we don't have a lot of headwinds. It's been it's been construction costs and interest rates, and I think construction costs are are leveling out, and interest rates are hopefully leveled and going to drop a half point or a point this year. And I I see a lot of um, uh, I I don't I I think we have a good run coming. I just saw today that uh, inflation went down a little bit, so maybe the Fed's going to drop interest rates a little bit. We hope that <coughs> that continues. I mean, there's an election coming up could, that could be good or bad for what we all do. Who knows? Uh, people are kind of waiting, waiting and seeing, hoping. Every election year, people just It's an excuse to not sit, do something. Sit right. on the house. Yeah. It has been for 40 years. So. Regardless who wins. Yeah. It's He's still pulling those numbers up. One thing I was thinking about that would be really awesome if you could provide it, like monthly or quarterly even, if you just sent a little blurb out, like from Stout, like a little, almost like a little newsletter thing of like, here's what retail shelf pricing looks like, and 2,500 foot, and I don't know if I hit exactly the industrial requirements on if that's the Yeah, 25 to 50 is fine on even just 25 to 50,000 yeah. base size. Yeah, and yeah. Then building four units. Yeah, so 100,000 to 10, CMU or till. Kind of like and a little. If you just sent it out sort of, of, here's roughly, here's roughly. The Bonneville, the Bonneville, Bonneville Builders. Builders yeah, we we, we, that, we yeah, know yeah. the Bonneville Builders. And we've, yeah. we've, we've, we've talked about this since ICS. It gets you in front of people, though. We've had some other brokers ask us about this. Because, because you guys need to be. Of course, we're only going to send it to Legend. Right. You need to send it out to clients. And it just. Put your name on front of them. It's your name. Yep. And we're pushing it out just right. say, hey, FYI, is your price in that on that piece of dirt you just offered on? Here's some numbers to keep in mind, and then here's who you call. Right? And this yeah. and this is what you can get to them quickly, not hmm? right. That's it's a, not a refined bit. It is no, right, this the ballpark. The ballpark. It is yeah. ballpark. It's a go, no go. And it will fluctuate. That's why the monthly idea is great. So we uh there's this this head right here, there's a lot going on in there. <laughs> <laughs> and we came back from ICS scene. And challenge Scott with this, and he's. This is the start of it, and and you drilling him like this is, his wheels are turning. Oh, yeah. He's not going to sleep much for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so this is awesome. extra. Like I think you, I think you're getting like, real time what, what helps these guys. So yeah, um, I mean, got a couple buildings, Academy Village, that were twelve thousand square feet, coming in at one hundred seventy two, one hundred seventy one. Those were bit pretty tight. Um, uh, Chipotle Shell, 2,300 square feet, 176. Where was that? Uh, that one was in Magna. Um, Layton, Utah, drive through, 167, 163 for a retail site shell, Clinton, Utah. So it looks like we're going to be in the. Were those, and th were this those is vertical new cost. Those yeah, are these are new build. This is vertical cost. Just vertical. So not the site work like parking. Yes. Yeah, okay. And what would you say site is it? What's it general? So I've I've got thirteen dollars and thirty two cents for site work. Um, that's going to depend on the site conditions. You know, sure. if it's just like pad ready, that number's going to go down. Mm -hmm. If there's you know horrible dirt, and we need to. Is that an field. average? Yeah, that's an average across everything that I'm seeing. Thirteen thirty two. And you would multiply that by the acreage of the lot. acreage. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's twelve, thirteen bucks for site work, and you have one seventy for your verticals. With yeah. the right. Park. Right. Um, hmm. There's a sixty-three in there. I'm not sure why that was. Maybe but down. in the one seventies, that's going to be down what 15, 18 percent from yeah. all of 12, 18 months ago. Yeah. I mean, it, it, these ones are pretty competitive right now, so I'm thinking we're down. Um, that's some of the relief we need right there. I don't know what, what is. That's better than I would have thought. Yeah. yeah. What, what's Wasatch getting on this academy multi tenant buildings he's describing? <coughs> they made it quote it. About how good of a comp those are from a lease perspective, but I think they're generally getting like 
mid They're getting high better. 30s on non drive through and they probably get high 40s on a drive through Well, they obviously don't have the A-team hires. I have we clearly they would do five-day bugs. I don't, I don't even know what's real. I, I had a lease signed like a year and a half ago on Academy with 1,500 square foot drive through and we were at 41 yeah. square and foot. And these ones we didn't build, but, you know, so this is both stuff that we've been awarded and stuff that we bid. Right. So, um, you know, it, it's good pricing if we bid it and we still lost it because we're, we're probably within a few percent of what, what the actual job line for. Did you give so us it yeah, till yeah. over? Um, yeah, let's see what I got for till. If you haven't had a whole lot of till lately. lately so, let's go back to so while you're looking at on retail. Yeah. So, we wheel up, it's a raw dirt site. You know, you got sidewalk curb gutter out there for the street and nothing else. It's just dirt. And let's assume there's not a ton of import export ballpark. It would flood 12, 13 bucks more or less on that. Yeah, I mean if it's yeah. pad ready, I think you're probably in the 10. Yeah. Um, you know, if you've got some more stuff, you're going to be 12. If there's you know some big storm tech systems that need to go in, that's going to raise that price a little bit more. Um, the, the, yeah. the average was 13. Yeah. Wasn't it a beautiful day when it was always five bucks? Yeah, you know, five six bucks. <laughs> <laughs> It never was. That's just what we plugged in. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, I, I think we. I think we. It was. You, that's bid out thirty-five bucks a foot for industrial TI for I think eight years straight. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's one fifty. Yeah. yeah. So these are all bid in twenty twenty-three tilt buildings. Um, average of them, they're over a hundred thousand. You know, over hundred fifty thousand square feet. Let's see, hundred nine dollars price per square foot vertical. Um, that average size was. But, but look at so they were interested in the smaller. A lot of those are bigger. Yeah, three hundred thousand foot. Yeah. That's fifty five. Oh, that's a Sahi. Mm -hmm. That's a Sahi. Oh yeah, that's that one. Too. And I'm not getting that one in there because that one was. Uh, that's the the. Uh, Gold refining. No, it was five hundred and forty five dollars. Stain was still Wow, it's a structural still a package. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> not normal. Yeah, high school. Yeah, and then the new sauna building's like two hundred and two dollars a square foot, which is actually yeah, it's it off. So yeah. somewhere around on the vertical, somewhere around a hundred and hundred and ten a foot. I I think on the smaller shells though, I would I would push that up to one twenty. Yeah. One thirty yeah. on vertical. Yeah. And then you're still seeing somewhere in the mid hundreds on the build out cost yeah. for the office and suite. Can I ask another question? It comes off, I think, a decent amount for this group. You um, don't have to raise your hands with us. I'm still <laughs> used to the teacher mode. Um, like Chris keeps talking over me. So. <laughs> um, I've heard rumors from some HVAC contractors that there may be some changes coming up in like refrigerant and technology. I think it might be like government. Changes that might push the cost of HVAC units substantially. And that's been going comes on up a lot. Is that do we know much about that? Or that's been that going on for you know some time already. Sure. Um, you know as they increase this year to get more and more efficient. Um, you know there's always big pushes there, and that is increasing lead times as they have to retool their sure. facilities. And we were having issues there getting custom rooftop units. And so we were just trying to find people that were just making the most generic rooftop units and just bringing those in. Have you heard of a, a new change coming? I haven't. No, I haven't. I, I only heard it from one guy, but he's like keeps beating this drum that like cost of HVACs might be like doubling here shortly. And I was like, I mean, it's the only one I've heard that from. But I'm trying to find out if that's true because that's like a meaningful part of a lot yeah, of yeah, yeah. negotiating. Yeah, make some calls. And Can we? I'll give you my that. card. Yeah. yeah. And I just love to know if that's yeah. actually true or if this is just like for sure or right wing crazy. You're trying to verify that. <laughs> so thanks. Yeah. There, I mean, there have been you know changes there. Sure. That have been going on as you know, time goes on. They start cracking down on what type of refrigerants that you can use because they're bad for the environment. And sure. Yeah. So, 18 months ago, uh, I would tell you that maybe even a year ago, that well, if we were awarded a contract, it had a 50% chance of actually coming out of the ground. And I think I think the developers have been scrambling and shifting gears, and they're, they're smarter about where they're spending their time, so I'm sure that has a lot to do with it. But I, I feel like that we 
we still see some of it, but I think once we're awarded a contract, I think it's 90% can happen. It's yeah. Fewer, fewer false starts. Yeah. That we're, ambiguous time period where we blew past $40 a foot was weird. It was very difficult. It was weird. And, you know, I started coming in here to our sales meeting 18 months ago and started telling everybody there's like, there's no more 30, it's over. We're into 40, remember that, right? And everybody's looking at me like, you're on crack. And I'm like, I'm telling you, this is where it's going. You can see it. And then we blew past the 40 so fast, it was like, what just happened? It went right to 50. And faster than the sneeze, man. You know, and it's, it's interesting. So, you know, you look at like, especially those single tenants. So, like, look at one of these new tools that you guys are constructing. If somebody, if like a net lease coupon for the buyer bought a Chipotle five years ago or six years ago, their total annual rent was probably one hundred and five to one hundred and thirty thousand dollars, and now the new rents are just one eighty to two whatever, right? And it's it's so fascinating thinking about what the risk differential is for the classic mom and pop, you know, owner mm -hmm. of one or two net lease properties, and what the difference is if they're holding a Chipotle at one ninety rent or two twenty mm -hmm. versus the person that has that one twenty. And you know, in the event there's any problem with Chipotle from a parent company standpoint, if restructured debt or anything else, you know, it's it's a nightmare, right? It's those higher rents usually get clipped first. Uh, it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. It's good to get it uh, right. It, it, this is helpful. Yeah, one thing that's interesting. So that was actually EOS that reminded me to bring this up. Um, so they're building in California, Arizona, Nevada, Texas, Florida one other city that I missed, and Utah's the most expensive place for them to build right now. Isn't that nuts? More than California, that's right. More than California. In California, they're building for 185 a foot. Here, they're, the last couple of deals they've done, they've been at 210. Well, they've never hired Stout, though. And these that's guys right. defense, right? We, right. Good point. Some of my highest rents are really It's the five really? and the Snickers. <laughs> and I do in Linda Fire. So, so I, wow. I haven't checked. Huh recently, but concrete in Utah, let's just round it up to 200 bucks a yard. California is probably 130, 140. Mm -hmm. That's a big difference. You can't get anything done in California. <laughs> <laughs> but if you could, the price would look great. Yeah. 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 But I, I think that's a, it's just me being, I, I don't know. California, everybody's leaving. California's economy seems to be losing steam. Utah's gaining steam. And I don't know how that equates to pricing, but I think it gets back to the the labor market. And this, this is interesting. Um, I don't know. You guys might not believe it, but GC's run on a tight margin. Especially, we don't self-perform a lot. We have a concrete division, we do, but it's you know 12 guys. We do what we can, but we don't self-perform. So we're running on some really thin uh, margins. And I was at lunch with a couple CPAs from the firm that does our stuff, and my partner Nate. Um, ask the question, if you guys were, you see it all, if you were going to uh, go out on your own, start your own business right now, what would you do? And both of them were like construction subcontractor. And this was, uh, it, was about, it was about a year, well, it was last fall. so. Um, yeah, they, they just said it's like just the, the profit margins they've been pulling down are, are that's their pick. That's why they're available now. Yeah, yeah and exactly. so, so there's a lot of room to give there. And um, so it, it's encouraging to me to see, like we're starting to see some give there and it's okay, they're going to be fine. They have some room to give yeah. and it, I think it's going to help the whole real estate industry. Thank you very much. Yeah. Where do you guys uh, store your equipment? And where's your concrete division at? Where do you guys, what site do you run it off? Oh, uh, we, so 
<laughs> I have to ask that. So we have me and my partner Nate are partners with the guy, another guy. There's three of us that own the concrete division. Okay, it's at his house. Okay, he's got a three acre parcel. And okay, but that building we were, we're looking we're, at, we're, we're yeah, we look forward to the day where we're cleaning the place and it's coming. That building we were looking at the other day is across the street from their office. Would probably be a pretty good fit for him to look at. So. Nice. Next to Paces? We're on camera. We can't discuss it until we get off camera. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.